tough up in this joint. Amen. Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles, go with me today. Go with me today to Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15. Glory to God. Luke chapter 15. I'm going to start reading from verse 25. Men of God, can you please start there? Luke 15. New King James. Yes. Now, his older son was in the field. Mm -hmm. And as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked, What these things meant? And he said to him, Your brother has come, and because he has received him safe and sound, your father has killed the fatted calf. Mm. But he was angry and would not go in. Therefore, his father came out and pleaded with him. Yeah. So he answered and said to his father, Lo, these many years I have been serving you. I never transgressed your commandment at any time. And yet you never gave me a young goat that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this son of yours came, yeah. who has devoured your livelihood with harlots, you killed the fatted calf for him. Mm -hmm. And he said to him, Son, yeah. you are always with me, and all that I have is yours. It is right that we should make merry and be glad, for your brother was dead and is alive again, and was lost and is found. Amen. Somebody say, thanks be to the reading of the word of God. Come on, say it loud. Amen. Amen. This particular passage of scripture um, carries weight. And I'm, this is my disclosure tonight. Might sound like a solemn message for you not going to do a lot of yelling but I am going to give you substance and content God continues to impress upon me that I need to function at a greater level in my office I teach and I preach but for revelation the children of God must receive God's word you must masticate it. In other words, it must be as necessary food for you. And when you begin to dig into this, you find out that you cannot have the revelation of God unless you have relationship with him. And how it is we have relationship is when we spend time with him. Are you hearing me? This particular passage of scripture I have seen men live out. I too at one point in time felt it. There have been some great ministers that I've walked with that what I'm gonna share with you all tonight had endured it. But thanks be to Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and Savior. Hear me. Tonight I'm gonna to talk to you about how you overcome the orphan spirit. Say it again. Overcoming the orphan spirit. Anybody ever seen an orphan before? Anybody know what an orphan is? An orphan is a child or one who has lost both parents. And is left to deal with the, with, the, with the circumstances and situations of the world. They, they grow up teaching themselves how to live. An orphan spirit. 
And when we talk about the orphan spirit, there are two types, Francis. Two types of orphan. You got the physical orphan, which is what I just described. Those who have lost their parents, mother and father. An example of that is Lot. You hear me? He lost his dad. He lost his mom. He had to follow his, 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 uh, uh, his uncle, Abram. Amen? Lot was an orphan. Another example of an orphan in scripture is Esther. Lost both of her parents. She had to be under Mordecai. Am I speaking to you? Then another example of an orphan spirit is Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan. Why am I going here? Well, why is an orphan even in the Bible? Because orphans are important to God. We have been called to take care of the widow, the orphans, and the strangers. It's a part of the believer's journey to always remember that because there's a blessing attached to it. Those of us who will be mindful to take care of those who are in this position, God says he blesses. But I'm going to go a little deeper. So that's the physical orphan. We have a duty to visit, according to Scripture, James 1 and 27. It says that we have a duty to visit, hear me, orphans. In other words, there's one somewhere that has never experienced a father's love. You have. There are some people physically whose mother and father are present. Hear me, but they still feel and live their lives as orphans. It's a message to that because it's a certain kind of rejection. There's a certain kind of way that that person is taken care of. Are you hearing me? But that particular one is not really the physical orphan. It is the second type of orphan, which is the spiritual orphan. Some of us in this room grew up with both our parents. Some of us knew our father. A psychologist once said, he said that when a child does not know his father, he loses his identity. So when we look at America today, we see a lot of young men growing up without a father. And then what you find deep-seated within them is the spirit of anger because they are thinking like orphans the orphan spirit is a spirit that comes upon a person that when opportunity will come to that orphan or to that one they be, they believe in gathering as if to say there's no tomorrow if an orphan is one that you adopt you bring into your home and you tell the orphan now that you have been adopted into us hear me it's going to take about five years to take out the orphan spirit because the orphan believes that every opportunity to get what it can get is going to grab. So the orphan will end up eating all the food in the house as though there's no other kid in the house. Why? Because now they're thinking, if I don't, they will. Am I speaking to you? Somebody say amen. I'm going somewhere with this. And the reason why it's being preached today is because it exists in the church. It exists in your home. It exists in your family. Orphan is also a jealous spirit. We all come from the same place, but somehow you mad or you jealous of me because I'm favored. Let me tell you something. You never struggle when God favors you. You hear me? And you don't have to spend your time having to defend the favor because it's not your place to defend it. You didn't earn it. Let God be the one to defend you in the midst of your favor because it's not fair. God thought of me to give this to me for a reason. If he wanted you to have it, he would have given it to you. Let's go one step further. The grace of God on our lives is the, is the unmerited favor of God on our lives. Therefore, the believer is being pulled into a place that Jesus himself said, I will not leave you orphan. Why did Jesus say it? 
because he was dealing with men that had walked away from a certain covering and began to follow him. And they had been with him for such a long time. He knew that the time was coming where the father in him was going to die. And as I said, when a child knows not his father, he doesn't have identity. So he tells them in John chapter 14 and 18, I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. Spiritual orphan, hear me, which is the second kind of orphan. Those who are lost and lack revelation of who they really are. They struggle with understanding their spiritual identity. I come, I give my life to Jesus Christ, but yet and still I struggle with an internal battle between who I am, what I was, you see what I'm saying? Because the enemy is going to keep popping up as to what you were, your condition, your issue, what you lack, how you were a liar, how you failed. And that's the enemy. He's just going to keep coming at you like that. But when you give your life to Jesus, he says that you are a new person in me. Therefore, my identity is attached to him. Who I am in Christ makes me who I am today. Not what I was, not who I was, not what I did. Romans chapter 8 and 1 says, Therefore there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. You can try to condemn me all you want, but when, the, when, when I give my life to Jesus, I was convicted and drawn into who he was. Am I speaking to you? Therefore I'm not an orphan. Then he says that you have been adopted in to this. Therefore, as an adapted child into the kingdom of God, you cry out to God and you say, Abba, Father, which means you now have the right to the inheritance of the Father. So you're not orphaned. But why is it that we struggle with this particular spirit? It's because we have still not retained the revelation of who we are in him. So the body of Christ suffers. You got people who will get it, then you got folks who struggle to get it because their minds have not been a certain way in, in terms of renewal. There are six signs of spiritual orphan carries. Six signs to know that we're dealing with a spiritual orphan. Number one, a spiritual orphan lives in religious people. And I say religious, not people who have relationship. Religious in the sense that they, they are trained to think a certain kind of way. They think they're above others. They think they know more than you. They think that they're academic. This is why I keep myself humble. Why? I, my degrees, let me tell you something, and I'll be very candid. I don't care all the degrees. I take them and throw them in the water. Why? It was revelation that changed my life. Not my degree, not my education. It's when I got to know him for myself, not through my parents, not through my grandparents, not through my friends. When I got to know Jesus for myself, I became a different person. An orphan spirit stays within the religious people. If you look at Luke 15 and 25, this is what the oldest son came with. The Bible says, now his oldest son was in the field. In other words, he wasn't even around his father. In the field. I'm out here doing the work. Mm-hmm. Religious people believe that blessing comes by their works righteousness, what they do. Not understanding Jesus came, Pastor Mo, to give us grace in the person of the Holy Spirit. You don't deserve what you have. What you have has come to you by faith. You've not earned this. When you said yes to Jesus, it was given to you as a free gift. It was Martin Luther that when he caught the revelation, 
while in the Catholic Church, he realized that the Catholic Church was not giving them the Bible to read. So what Luther started doing, he, he went and got a Bible and he would hide as a young man and begin to read the Bible, begin to read scripture at night with candlelight. Because had he been caught by the priesthood, they would have done something. They would have, they would have excommunicated him. So Luther caught the understanding of who Jesus was by stealing time to stop being religious and create a relationship. When he got the revelation of who Christ was, he then started fighting the church. Therefore birthing, right? Birthing now the reformation. The changing of the church. And he put the 99 thesis on the board. 99 reasons why revelations carry more weight than religion who he knew in jesus christ he was delivered from the orphan spirit am i speaking to you are you hearing me you please stay with me i'm almost i'm getting somewhere both sons in this passage of scripture that past ezekiel read both sons listen both sons left their father one went to the field the other one went to go hang out with the pigs, the prostitutes, and the pimps. That's where he went. He wanted to know the world, right? One stayed behind, but he did not stay in his father's place. He stayed in the field. Why? How can you, how, with everything, okay, we're going to get there. But he walked, he went his way. Stuck on his religiosity, his feelings, not understanding who his father was. They both went away. One came back, listen, and another refused to come in. It's in the text. The one that came back, right, came to himself. The other one came back. Out of another reason. And when he arrived, listen, when he arrived, he had a problem. Why did Jesus tell this parable? Jesus was trying to let his believer, let his followers know that in following me and being like me, Christianity is not about religion. Christianity is really having a revelation of who God is. When you know your God, you know yourself. When you find out who Jesus Christ is in you, you find out who you are in him. It is in him we live. In him we move. In him we have our being. You hear me? He said, he said now that you have been adopted into the family, you cry out, Abba, Father. Which means you have access to everything God has intended for you to have as a child of God because you said yes so when you say yes men of God you are no longer one that's left out in the field because now the promise of Jesus to his disciples I will not leave you orphans I will come to you stand when you look at legal legal um, structure when a person adopts a child that child carries greater access to the inheritance of the adopted parents than the natural kid. His life is set. The father can reject his own children. Now check your legal stuff. That's why when a child is being adopted, you go through all these things. Because that child's life now is going to be changed forever. Now you just got to work out of them that selfish spirit. Yeah. Orphans? <laughs> we, when they come in the house at night, so here's what now. The food is for everybody. Now the kids there, they know they can eat, right? But what the orphan would do when everybody's sleeping will go in the pantry Find the cookies and stuff and start eating. Why? Because for years, for days, they had not eaten what it is 
the other kids have been what they pray for is now in front of them so they have this grabbing spirit you hear me and when you don't give that or it's not available or there's structure to it they get angry and then throw a fit you hear me am i speaking to you christianity is not a religion it's a revelation religion is what you have when you don't have revelation when you have no revelation of who christ is you are very religious that means you're legalistic you're constantly judging people based upon what you think it is only one man only one man fulfilled all 613 of the judaic law and that was jesus Never asked you to do it. He came to fulfill it so that you don't have to struggle trying to do it. Am I speaking to you other night? Religion is legalism, not love. Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and Savior, Son of the living God, was sent here on this one premise, God so loved. So when, you, when this is building up inside of you, you find yourself fields, not fathers. Do, not done. When it was all said and done, he said what? It is finished. You want the best God got for you? Step into the finished works of Christ. Don't struggle so much to try to think you get to impress him. It's already done. That's what grace is. Oh, but for the grace of God, I'm here. I, didn't, I, don't, I don't deserve this, Dennis. But he wakes me up every day to remind me. He wakes you up every day, Ezekiel, to remind you. He wakes you up, Junior and Rita, to remind y'all, I've done it. Now step into it. Know that it's already done. If you believe it, go get it. He said, you shall have any. If you ask anything in my name, you will get it. <laughs> it is done. The finished works of Christ now gives you the right to live into this world as a king's kid. One who now is adopted into the faith. You belong. You now have access to his inheritance. Am I speaking to you? But this scripture is funny though. This scripture is funny. We'll get to it. Okay? So that's what it is. Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah, for flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my father who is in heaven, Matthew 16, 17. And he said, upon that revelation, I'll build my church. When you get the revelation, you find the relationship. When the revelation is revealed to you, you're walking in the relationship. I know who my God is. And there's a certain kind of authority you move in, Dennis. There's a certain boldness you have when you know who you are in Jesus. You're not moved by outward circumstances. You're moved by what he said. You're moved by what he promised. You're moved by what he said. And you move in it knowing that he will not fail you. I don't care how long you got to walk. Keep walking forward. Trusting that what he said he would do, he would do it. I decree over your life tonight that you will not fail in understanding the revelation of who you are in Jesus Christ. May the Lord continue to reveal to you who you are in him. You're not orphans. Can I keep going? Somebody say amen. amen. Then he goes on to say here, the second type of orphan, the second way we can identify this spiritual orphan is that an orphan spirit brings out anger. Luke chapter 15 and 28 says it, but he was angry. Why? Why was he angry? He felt that he didn't, he felt that the other person shouldn't have it. 
because they went out there and messed up. Some of y'all got siblings like that. I always tell people, I say, listen, <laughs> some of our siblings will go through more than we've gone through. Some of us, we learn because we watch them fall. We learn from their mistakes, especially the middle and the younger kids. That, that's how they do it. I'm the oldest. So all my mistakes taught the little ones, oh, don't do that because they'll beat you. They will take that demon out of you. But we sometimes have to go through that because of where God has taken us. Some of us, the level of your struggle speaks to the level of your breakthrough. Some of us, Pastor Moore, the depth of our struggle, the deep portion of our struggle is God building a foundation so that when he blows you up, you are twice as, you go twice as much higher for what he's called you to because now you're rock solid. No matter what winds blow, no matter what comes your way, the enemy can't break you because now you're deeply rooted in him. So when you see yourself going through this, you know, listen, family, sometimes it is God building you. If you're a skyscraper, if you're called to that level of greatness, son, understand you're going to go twice as much through something. But if you stay the course, if you don't get weary in well-doing, you will reap in due season. Am I speaking to you? So can I keep going? Spiritual orphans bring anger. Anger is only one letter short of danger. D. Anger is one letter short of danger. A super consistently angry person is one trigger point short of killing somebody. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but I've hung out with brothers who, because the father left, because the father was not in the home, they grew up so angry, like every little thing was a trigger point. They were mean, they were angry. They didn't even know how to treat women. They didn't know how to treat the children. They said, some of them said, I'll never be like my father. But when, the, when they became fathers, everything their father was, that they hated, they became. Because they never received deliverance. They never got a chance to know Jesus Christ through relationship. They never, hear me, and some of them were in the church. Wearing the collar. Showing up, walking like penguins. On confirmation Sunday, I mean, they come in like this. Same dudes that are beating their wives. Some of them probably watching tonight. I don't care. Y'all already know me. They go home, they down talk the woman. They do stuff to her to abuse her. Let me, let, me, let me put this out there. Write it down. When God gives you something you don't have an understanding of, abuse is inevitable. Even the anointing. When God gives you an anointing and you don't really understand the gift of that anointing, you will abuse it. And that's how God takes it from you. Am I speaking to you? He took it away from King Saul. So, so let me go on. Anger is only one, one letter short of danger. According to Better Health Channel, anger creates problems for our health as headache, digestive problems, such as abdominal pains, insomnia, increased anxiety, depression, high blood pressure, skin problems, such as eczema, heart attacks, and the list goes on and on. Stay angry, you're going to die real early. Why are you just mad? 
No reason, no, Dennis. No reason. And, and sometimes the stuff they ask for, we give it to them. Huh? Take it, care you trouble. But you're still mad. Now, it goes there now from, from jealousy now to envy, which then leads to malice. And when you start to function in the place of malice, you want you one trigger point away from killing a person. The person got, they ain't even paying you no mind. They've moved on with their life. You said you wanted to go, I give you your ticket, exit door. Please care yourself. Your trouble, your Lord, me take out. Freedom is my portion. The minute you left, ah, the, the love of God. What the spirit of the Lord is, there is my shakata base. But then you still come to my house to fight me. What? You angry now, you envious. The problem is, God has blessed me. You just don't want my God to keep blessing me. You will live your reward. You will have what you say. Am I speaking the other night? That's an orphan spirit. That is an orphan spirit. Hear me. Be angry and do not sin. It's what we find in the Bible, Ephesians 4, 26 and 27. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. When people stay in the realm of anger, they are giving the devil access to work in their mind. The Bible says don't give the devil place. In other words, can you control the flesh? When somebody pushes that button, I'm a, and you know you're functioning at a higher place than this individual in front of you. This individual still don't have revelation of who Jesus is, but you do. What did Jesus do on the cross? Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Jesus taught us something there. All along before he went to the cross, he would say, you are forgiven, correct? But on this day, when the flesh was what he was dealing with. He had to turn it up to the father. Lord, please, I beg. Dad, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Because he knew what his father could do. Am I speaking to you? Let's keep going. Anger is an open door for demons. Yo, please hear me. When a person is constantly angry, he is functioning in demon demonology. Hear me. They are following him. They are attached to him. When you just trigger for no reason, Junior, the slightest thing gets you upset. You lose control. That's not a fruit of the spirit. The fruit of the spirit tells us to be in, be in control, to be temperate. Am I speaking to you? But the works of the flesh speaks to jealousy, always having contention with your people. Are you hearing me? And that's not God's will for your life. Go to Galatians chapter 5. Let me, let me open this up a little bit more. I may not finish this, but I promise you we will continue in it because one of the things I believe God has given this house is to attack those spirits that attach itself to members of this body, clear across the board, that where it is we are supposed to be prospering, Rita, because we have these things hanging on us we're not going forward. I come against the spirit of quick temperness. That's not control. Verse 19. Yes. Now the works of the flesh are evident. Mm. Let, 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 let's read it in the amplified. That's the one I want. Come on, you writing? You taking notes? Now the practices of the sinful nature are clearly evident. The practices of the sinful nature are what? Clearly evident. That means you will see them. A true believer will see them. And, and you know, sometimes when you tell people, oh, that's strictly sin, they think something wrong with you. No, it doesn't have to only be fornication and homosexuality. Listen to, listen to the work of the flesh. 
Keep going. They are sexual immorality. Sexual immorality. Impurity. Impurity. Sensuality. Sensuality. Total irresponsibility. What? Lack of self-control. Stop, oh, stop. Stop. Sensuality means total irresponsibility and lack of self-control. You know what that means? You can't control yourself. We're going to have to do another program here. Just be us. We'll cut the camera off so I can go a little deeper. Glory to God. Out of this context, out of this content, hear me. Pornography, bestiality, all of them fall within that word. What drives your body sexually? The appeal. Totally irresponsible. You cannot abuse what God has given you. Then, some of y'all want to come up in here talking about you're holy. You cannot be holy, be jealous, be angry, be sensually irresponsible. For this is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And how you take care of this speaks to the God in you. Am I speaking to y'all tonight? Keep going, son. Idolatry. Idolatry. Who it is you're worshiping. God has blessed me. God has blessed some of y'all up in here. Nice cars, you know, the one that got heat in the seat. Got a massage. It massages you when you're driving. When you're driving too fast, it... It got the nerve to slow the car down. Balling, just balling out of control. Hmm? But instead of worshiping the God who blessed you with it, you worship the thing. That's idolatry. Can I bring it closer to you? You get married, God finally blesses you with the man of your, of your dreams, the woman of your dreams. Yes, God said, husband, love your wife. He never said, worship her. Never said, worship her. So when she start talking like, you got to now be the one bowing down to worship. Man, look, girl, go sit down somewhere. You won't have more authority over my God. Because if I don't worship him, I can't take care of you. If I don't serve him, I won't be able to serve you. If I don't love him, I promise I won't know how to love you because I was man was sleeping when he made woman. So for me to find you and everything about you, I got to go talk to him. <laughs> Gentlemen, y'all please hear me. This is a fact. I don't care how long you will be married and how long you'll be together. It will take a, it, it will take a lifetime to know her. She's God's secret weapon in the earth realm. Mm-hmm. I'm telling y'all, women, whoo, glory to God. Married one and got sisters and got daughters. They all unique. But I love them. Love them. You don't have a choice. I'm praying for Eddie. Glory to God. Yes. Keep reading, son. Sorcery. Hmm. Say that again. Sorcery. Sorcery. Where are you going to get answers while you're coming to church saying you're trusting God and you're here? Some people will come here, roll, lie, lift their hand, kiss the floor, grab the flowers, walk out of here. And still go call somebody back home. Or will go home when nobody's looking. They wear black at night, right? And they will go in the village. You see Papa Tunde? <laughs> Papa, mm, what my future look like? Prophet Frank prophesied that this is the But mm, I haven't seen him in two weeks. 
I need to know. That's sorcery. Hear me? That's sorcery. Samuel, Samuel and Saul. When Samuel passed away, Saul went to a soothsayer, a seer, somebody who functioned in sorcery. What we think, y'all don't understand. But when God takes you, hear me, when you're gone, you're gone. When they resurrected Samuel, they did not resurrect, it, resurrect Samuel himself. They resurrected the face of Samuel. Who told you that spiritual witchcraft is not also a spiritual thing? The devil too working. His goal is to look like God. Be considered as God. Oh, one of these days I'm going to teach you on the Catholic Church. So we can understand some of the stuff we don't know we're dealing with. Religion? Religion is what he came and he fought. He said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He wasn't saying it to the poor people. Ezekiel, he was talking to the religious sect. Sorcery. Sorcery. There are some people, God placed you here to hear this prophetic voice over your life. You will still leave here. Go somewhere else and go ask somebody else to prophesy over you. Our generation today is chasing so much prophecy that people are now considered within the realms of prophet lying. I will say whatever I want to say just to get you. And then here's the deep part about it. Some of these same prophets has gone to voodoo doctors and stuff and taken on the spirit of revelation as found within the seven lost books of the book of Moses. And the, oh God, Deuteronomy is the book that really emphasizes the, the curses. The seven last books of the books of Moses was an expansion on the book of Deuteronomy, and these are the curses. That's why you don't see it anywhere. That's why whenever you catch or you kill a, a wish doctor, they always find one in there. Am I speaking to you? <laughs> Guys, let me tell you something. There is a battle for your soul. There's a battle for your soul. There is a battle for your soul. So there are people now who are standing in pulpits. Fill of the demon. Can see stuff, can give you your address. And you think it's real prophecy. If a demon can, if, 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 a, if a witchcraft person can, can usher in the very nature of Solomon or uh, uh, Samuel. If, 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 the, if the girl that, that was walking behind Paul and Silas shouting, these are great men. They, they, they are men of God. Paul had to turn around and say, shut up. Because he recognized that was not of God. May God open the eyes of our understanding and give us vision. May he, may he show to us the evil of the spiritual realm. Prophet was teaching last night on dreams. Oh, that was good. He going to have to come back and teach again. God in, his, in your dreams sometimes, God will show you things that are specific to you and your future. Then God will show you certain things that is particularly you and might put somebody in there that is a familiar spirit. And you would think that the person is the one that hates you. No. When you see that, you pray that God will give you revelation. Am I speaking to you? Shout amen. amen. Keep reading, son. We're going to just walk down this tonight. I, I think I, I'm going to have to come back and finish this. This is some good stuff. Hostility. Glory to God. Hostility. Hostility. Hey. Hey. Yeah, please, or you help me. Hey, that's all I can say. For what? You just, for no reason. 
people say hi to you. It's a good day. What, what, what is good about this day? What's it? Your wife, okay? You're fussing. You, you come to me, oh. you come to the pastor. I don't know what's going on with Mary, oh. But as I said, you got to talk to her. For what? Well, we, we had some altercation and uh, the way she was talking to me. Okay. Question. Always ask. So what did you do? Nothing. I said, okay, cool. We'll get Mary. Why are you calling Mary? I got three of your kids standing in my office. So what's going on with mom and dad? What have you guys seen? <laughs> you know the children, right? Ah, Pastor Sorry, last night daddy went off because mommy didn't put enough meat in the egg goosey. Is that what it really was? But he's been like that the whole week. Old. Last night, mommy just came and was mean to daddy. Get out, you know, foolish man. The kids have always helped me in counseling sessions. My wife will tell you about me. I think I was the only minister in the church that did that. Whenever they would come, I wouldn't say anything because I had access to the youth. They go bring me such and such. Tell them, come see me. You give children food and candy, they would talk all day. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. It doesn't mean you keep your children from me. I'll feed them, man. Lock that door. We're in the office. I'm cutting up with them. We're acting a fool, and they just give me details. When they leave from there, okay, you know now, can't say nothing. Okay, pass that. They go when we're having a meeting. I'm listening to both of these people tell me their issues. One is confirming what the kid said. The other is confirming the other one's lying. And you feel the tension. So I start to address it based upon my resources, based upon my evidence, but not that prayer. You all hear me? So a great ministry always puts in place things that can help people to deal with some of the stuff we're talking about. Because it's in the church. As long as you got human beings in the church, you don't have the perfect church. Am I speaking to you? <laughs> you don't. One day somebody will not like me, will come up in here, will sit on this front row, and will watch me preach everything about them. I ain't talking about them all. I'm just preaching. All of a sudden, why you put my business out there? Am I speaking to you? Son, keep reading. I, I'm... I'm are, are y'all getting this? Are y'all getting this? These are works of the flesh. Works of the flesh. Keep reading. Strife. Strife. There are some of us that are in, in stuck in strife because we are trying to play Dutch. We got one foot in the world and one foot in the church. We're trying to go with what the world says. Social media is driving our thinking, our mindset, and everything. But then we come to church pretending like we really came to meet Jesus. The Bible says a double-minded man will be unstable in all of his ways. Correct? Then it goes on to say, let not that man ask anything of the Lord because he won't get it. Strife is birth in double-mindedness. Strife comes about when you stay in the place of persistent anger. Strife comes in your life when you do not know how to say, I forgive you. Just mad. Work of the flesh. Keep going, son. Jealousy. Jealousy. <laughs> I started a series on it. We're going to keep teaching on it. You already know. It comes from a place of insecurity. Most people, jealousy is birthed out of their personal insecurity and their fear of losing something or their position. That's all. But the person that showed up, hear me now, 
It's like God going into the wilderness or into the, into the field and calling David out because the rest of y'all don't qualify. And y'all could have been the one that looked like you qualified to be in the front row, looked like you qualified, like God called you. But God never called you. You're just there because chronological order. You came first, you came second, you came third. I've seen people try to build church because we all started together, so I'm supposed to give you a position. The devil is a liar. You better earn it. You better earn it. You know why? Because until you are fully delivered, you've gone through the process. Somebody's mother, child, daughter can come into this church, and if you're not delivered from your issues, you will hurt somebody. That's why Jesus had to take his disciples through three years before he rendered the power. Jesus himself had to deal from 12 until he was 30. Am I speaking to your family? 18 years before he came and John says, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Why? He had to submit to a carpenter and build so that when he got you building furniture, when he stepped into his ministry, it was now time for him to build humanity. Am I speaking to you? Keep reading, son. Fits of anger. Fits of anger. Why are you angry? Look, this, this stuff's so good. Keep reading. Then I will tell you to go back and read it again, the message. I like the message because the message is, is, the, is the real ghetto. I mean, the real street uh, translation. Disputes. Disputes. People fighting each other in the church. Disputes. You're just in this place of constantly not able to agree. Sometimes the mature thing to do is just say, you know what? Let's agree to disagree. And let's move on. Oftentimes people who really love their spouses or enjoy the relationship they have with people, they will do that. Let's agree to disagree. Okay, I got my opinion, you got yours. Can you respect that? Yeah. But there are people who will want to force their, you know, you, you better agree with me. Or else we ain't talking for a week. I have learned, and I'm giving you a secret. When you learn to graduate from the dictates and opinions of other people, you will live a very happy life. If you don't want to be my friend no more because I corrected you, bye, Felicia. So long, bye-bye. Yes. Disputes for what? You're looking for, for trouble, you'll find it. The Bible says, seek and you will find. Knock, it will be open. What God didn't reveal to you, why are you looking for it? You see, you see, people look for their own thing. And they allow the devil to take that, Rita, and work their mind. Oh, this guy, this guy like dispute. Let's, let's look for one in the church. Hmm? Okay, this Sunday I'm going to make Junior the lead. Okay? The pastor said Junior should be the lead. I don't care if you practiced last week, the national anthem. I chose Junior to sing the song. So Junior gets up, starts singing, and Sister Mary, who thought she was going to have the lead, she ain't singing the lead on that day. Oh, yeah, now we got a problem. Houston, we got a problem. Am I speaking to y'all? Here comes the dispute. Pastor Sai, I need to talk to you. Okay, let's talk. And I'm one of those pastors. I listen to you. Then after a while, I'll tell you, okay, I'll tell you what, go sit down somewhere. I told them to sing. Is that okay? <clears throat> one week passed and we see them. So I just pray them when they come back in. Hey, baby. Hey, Pastor Sai. Hmm. Ooh, I'm in some people's Kool Aid tonight. Keep reading. Dissensions. Descent. Oh, God, Lord Jesus. This right here is what you will find at the high levels in ministry. Leadership. Paraleadership. You find people being jealous of their own brothers who, who they walk in together. But because this one has a gift and this one has a gift, you don't understand the other person's gift. Now you're mad at the person because favor is knocking on his door because his gift is pulpit. Your gift is, is, is auxiliary. 
The other person's gift is leadership training. You understand what I'm saying? The other person's gift is to handle the ministry school, administration. But when people don't understand their spiritual giftings, hear me, they tend to be jealous of the other person's gift. Now dissension comes in. They go and start creating cliques to have these private conversations. I come against the spirit of cliquishness up in this church. We will not go have sidewalk conversation about your brother who's right there. That's a Pharisee spirit. They never address Jesus. They always stood in the corner and gossiped and talked and did all of that kind of stuff. Now when it finally comes to the leadership, we're hearing all of these things. There are going to be some of you in ministry that you will be the three. Peter, James, John. Not because you're part of the 12. That means you get a chance to come from here to here. Everybody did not go to the Mount of Transfiguration. Do not create dissension. Dissension is rebellion. And rebellion is witchcraft. And when you start to do things like that, you bring a curse on yourself. Am I speaking to y'all tonight? Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Keep reading, son. Factions. Factions. Hero. Factions. I got my own. Like I just said, we're going to create our own little thing within our thing. I am my brother's keeper. If I can pray with you corporately, I am your, your somebody who will be reminded to pray for you. I'm supposed to walk in love with you every single day. Jesus says they will know that you are my disciples by the way you love each other. And when you have an orphan spirit, it's very hard to release that love or release that thing you never knew you. You never felt, never experienced. That's why Jesus said, I will not leave you. I will come to you. Because that love was relevant. In his exit, in it, this passage of scripture that I'm, I'm sharing with y'all tonight, from the book of John, this is Jesus now, preaching after the last supper to his disciples to give that final sermon, then when we go to John 17, that's when you really see the Lord's prayer. That whole John 17 is Jesus praying. It's called the priestly prayer. And he talks to his father about the people who he chose to walk with him, that when he leaves, that may they also be taken care of. That's why he said, I will go and I will send you one to guide you, to keep you. And we're in that dispensation today where the Holy Spirit continues to teach us everything the father speaks so we continue to walk in that love make sense keep reading we're almost done envy envy you got it i'm jealous of it but i don't want you to have it i don't want it i just don't want you to have it Look at Flo. She looked good in that new car. Don't want her. That was a liar. Somebody shout hallelujah. Almost done. Keep reading. Drunkenness. Drunkenness. Being controlled by another kind of spirit. Do not be drunk with wine. Bible says there's another passage of scripture that says it's another kind of spirit spirit alcohol spirit some of y'all here know how people act when they get drunk they become bold they become a whole nother thing everybody got an uncle Jesse that comes to the to the barbecue drunk alcohol king juice whatever and they become somebody different Am I speaking to y'all tonight? Hear me. These are all works of the flesh. I had a friend I worked with. He was a functioning alcoholic. Never knew. But every day when this boy come, he had that coffee. That coffee has some extra spirit. 
What's up, Sly? Hey, what's going on, buddy? You never knew. And he was good at his job. Like you, you never knew. He just had that cup sipping all day. He just good job. Straight face, like you, his eyes weren't even glazed. We'll get in the car and drive to go get lunch and come back. He still got that cup. I think he reloaded, Francis. Part two. When he got saved, 15 years, you walk with the person. 15 years, you walk with the person. You didn't even know that. When we got to the place where we called for the men's meeting and it was time for men to just put it down at the altar. Everything we were struggling with. Pornography, drugs, men in the church. He came up. And, I, and I'm like, so brother, I, I just got to tell you, I cried. I cried. I said, why, why? I couldn't. That shame. His wife didn't even know. Because how he did it, he stopped at 7-Eleven when he would leave home. Get the large cup. Family, I'm telling you, this is ministry. But the works of the flesh, keep reading, son. The works of the flesh, listen to what Paul says to the church. Keep reading. Riotous behavior. Riotous behavior. You just want to start a fight, no matter where you are. I ain't do nothing to you. All of a sudden, you're trying to look for a fight. Why you didn't give me a piece of chicken at the, at the gathering? Am I speaking to you? Keep reading. And other things like these. And other things like these. I warn you beforehand. I warn you beforehand. Just as I did previously. Just as I've done before in, in Galatians chapter 1. That those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of Say that again. Those who practice, practice such, things such things will not inherit the kingdom. Will not inherit the kingdom of God. So some of us are showing up and, and, and we come up and you're all holy. But these are the things we're functioning away from the house. But yet and still we're talking about you're going to make it to heaven. You will hear these words when you say, well, I did this for you, Lord. Did not sing glory in your name. Did not show for praise and worship rehearsal. When God remembers that the words that came out of your mouth, I'm about to hold you accountable. You were the same person that was cussing your brother in the parking lot. You were the same person that was speaking ill about your sister. You were the same person when, when, your, when your daughter, their, their, their mothers and fathers who were jealous of their kids. Successes. Some of them deacons in the church. Some of them, oh, Shiba Karabasi. Oh, this is going to be a good church. The word of God will be preached. Lives will be saved in Jesus' mighty name. We will be bold. In these last days, if the church don't stand up and start preaching the truth, our children will fall to whatever they think truth is. He said, I warn you. As I did before, if you practice these things, you won't see the kingdom of God. I'm going to stop here tonight. But family, you'll listen to me. Next Thursday, I'm coming back. We're going to finish the orphan spirit. Please read Bible. Read, read this. Read this. Read Old and New Testament. See how you can bring the word of God together. Let it make sense to you. Say, in these last days, young men will prophesy. Old men will dream dreams. God will cause something to fall on you. Huh? According to Joel 20, I mean 2 and 26. And he said, I'll put my spirit, I'll put my spirit on all flesh. Here is where we're about to transition from fleshly things to spiritual things. And this is how we grow. 
And when we get to understand that there are some things, there are some other spirits in the realm that will try to attach itself to you, to break you and prevent you from seeing what God got for you. If we don't study to show ourselves approved unto God, if we don't make this word of God as necessary food, we won't live this thing. We won't see heaven. Because it's the word of God that transforms lives. I pray we never just come here to come sing a song and go home. Every time you come here, I pray God increases your faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I pray to God every time I come here that you, your faith increases and you will have the ability and the, and, the, and the audacity to think when you hear this message. When you go back and listen to it again, Pastor Sai said these things. Are you hearing me? Next week when I come back, I'm going to go to the same passage of scripture and we're going to read it from the message Bible so you can hear the real deal. This was theological. When you start hearing stuff like you, you got problems with your brother, contention, sedition, jealous, you, you, want, you, want, you, you don't want the person to have. We come against that tonight in the name of Jesus. Come on, stand on your feet. Somebody shout amen. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Come on, shout amen. amen. Was that good for you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah.